Let's do an example of a non-inertial reference frame that's accelerating with a linear constant acceleration. So suppose we have a box placed on the floor of a railroad car that's accelerating to the right with a constant acceleration A. So here's the railroad car, here's the box on the floor of the car. Now let's assume that the box doesn't slide, but this car is accelerating to the right. And so you might say, well, okay, there's got to be a static friction force on that box to prevent it from sliding. And uh, if there were no friction force, that box would slide from the point of view of an observer within the uh, railroad car, it would slide back. So that friction force is actually going to be responsible for the acceleration of the box inside the car. Otherwise the box wouldn't accelerate at all and the car would just ex uh, accelerate and the box would hit the back side of the railroad car. So there are three forces acting on this box. The static friction, uh, mass times acceleration of gravity acting down the weight, uh, the normal force of the floor of the railroad car acting up on the box. We're going to first anal we're going to analyze this in two different ways. First, from the point of view of the inertial observer. So this is the guy standing on the ground, watching the passing railway car, and he's in inertial. He's in a stationary reference frame, and and that's inertial. Then we'll also analyze this from the point of view of an observer that's in the railway car that's accelerating with the car. All right. Well, we think that we can apply Newton's laws in this inertial reference frame. So this A here is the acceleration of the box as seen by this observer. The observer standing on the side of the, uh, on the ground watching the accelerating car. M is the mass of the box. So if we take the x direction like this, well, and this sum of forces, let me actually, before taking the x direction, let me just write this out. The sum of the forces. We have three forces. One, two, three. So this equation gives me mg vector, it's a vector equation, right? Plus the normal force plus fs that's a vector sum, adding them all up, equals the mass times the acceleration. And we can take the x component, let's just say this is the x direction. In the x direction, the forces in the x direction would be, well, if that's x and this is y, then um, as seen by this observer, there would be only one force in the x direction. It'll be Fs equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. And this acceleration in the x direction, if the floor, if the box doesn't slide, then this acceleration in the x direction darn well better be equal to the uh, acceleration of the box car. In other words, the railway car and the box inside of the railway car, if the, if the uh, box in the car is not sliding, they'll both have the same acceleration because they're both having the same velocity and the same position and everything. And so we end up um, finding the static friction force in this way. Let's analyze it from the point of view of the non-inertial observer. Now, the trick here, and this is the new, you've done this a million times, this is the new way of looking at our world. 
So now we're going to observe this box. This observer is going to observe this box. The box is still mass M. There's still the three forces acting on it that, that are acting in the inertial reference frame. All three of those carry over to the non-inertial reference frame. And you can take that to the bank. Whatever forces there are in the inertial reference frame, you carry them over and they will also apply in the non-inertial reference frame. So we've got these three. But as we talked about in the last concept, 9.2 I believe it was, there's an additional force that you have to include. So this is the sum of the forces as seen by the inertial observer. Plus an additional force that we call an inertial force that's experienced only by the non-inertial S. And that's supposed to equal the mass times the acceleration of the box. Well, here's the, the interesting thing about this. From this observer's point of view, that box is three feet in front of him, or five feet, or whatever the distance is. That box is not accelerating from observer S's point of view. It is, it is accelerating from observer S naught's point of view. He can see it getting farther and farther away and going faster and faster. But this observer is, both of these observers, as seen by an inertial observer, both this observer and the box are accelerating to the right. But as this observer looks at the box, he says, that box isn't accelerating, it's stationary. And so he says, that's zero. There's no acceleration. And so then we end up with these three inertial observer forces, so mg plus fn plus fs, the three forces that the, the inertial observer sees, plus this force seen by the non-inertial observer. And what is that force? We worked it out in concept 9.2. It's minus m times the acceleration. And that's going to equal zero. Well, if we want to look at just the forces in the x direction, uh, let's take a coordinate system that looks like that, x, y, and in the x direction I'll have uh, the x component of the static friction will be pointing in the plus x direction, and the x component of this inertial force will be in the negative x direction. And that's going to equal zero, because these other two forces are in the y direction. So that says that Fs equals Ma. Same thing. So that's comforting that in these two frames you get the same, the same result.